بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي لحب في الله we ask we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all of his divine names and attributes to bless us with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cuz in this time period it is such a strange thing as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh give glad tidings to the strangers alayhi salatu was salam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in and bless all of those who follow them bi ihsan ila yawm ad-din ahabbatu fillah this is the last lesson lesson in the treaties advice for the student of knowledge by sheikh muhammad ibn abdul wahhab al-wasabi and this is beautiful advice that this imam has departed or imparted upon his students and those wishing to seek ilm al mashar and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the sheikh and protect all the ulama and the people of yemen in general from the wickedness that and the trial that has befallen them from the houthiin shia and the uh, al qaeda and the other takfiri groups who do not wish to see any sort of stability and all the people of corruption and evil who wish to profit and gain at the expense of the yemeni people may allah preserve ahli yemen and unite them on kitab illa wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the sheikh mentioned as a part of his advice in the last part of his treaties and we mentioned this in our last sitting preserve your time and health imam al bukhari uh, rahimallahu ta'ala collected in his sahih an ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma that he said the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said two blessings are used improperly by many of the people health and free time those are two blessings and ni'ma ni'am min al min allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your health and your free time because in your health it is easier for you to make ibadah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to the masjid to get up and and pray and to to do the things which uh we are required to do as believers in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's easier when you're in good health and likewise when you have time when you have free time the more time and the more you get busy in this dunya the more it takes from your free time the more responsibilities you have the more difficult it is to seek knowledge the more difficult it is to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it becomes more challenging So those two things are great blessings from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and those people who are favored with those things will of course be called to account by their Lord Subhanahu wa ta'ala that they were blessed with an abundance of of their health and their free time. So use it for righteousness. Then the Sheikh said he said giving importance to the Arabic language. He said this is also an important piece of advice for the talib al-ilm. So preserve your time and your health, use your time and your health for seeking knowledge and doing righteous deeds and making revision and looking into issues and sitting with the ulama and those kind of things and likewise learn the Arabic language because you will not truly be able to gain the true fruits of knowledge without the Arabic language. That's just the key. So it doesn't mean everyone who knows some Arabic or everyone who's Arab is blessed with knowledge of the Sharia. La abadan. That's not the case. But rather it is the case that you have to seek knowledge and that Arabic is a tool. Arabic is a key on that 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 path. And the Sheikh said learn as much Arabic language that will suffice you in speaking properly and pronunciation and what you need to know to construct proper textual meaning so that you so you're able to understand fiqh and usul of fiqh and you can go into tafsir and you can go into kitab illa wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam with 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 understanding with at least the basic understanding in the arabic language and then seek knowledge so this is just a key uh, a key for you to be on a much stronger path of seeking knowledge you can seek knowledge without the arabic language of course There are so many things that are translated and there's people who articulate that for us 
in English or whatever your language may happen to be, whether it's Urdu and of course in Urdu, Urdu and some of the other languages you have ulama. You have ulama, you have uh, Pakistani scholars, you have Indian scholars that speak Hindi, you have scholars in Somali that speak Somali, you have Ethiopian scholars that speak Oromo and Tigray and, uh, and uh, Amharic and all these various languages. So that's a ni'mah. But for those of us who have English, who are English speakers, there's not many, uh, there's alhamdulillah a lot of students of knowledge, but there's not many ulama that speak English. So that's why it's important to gain the Arabic language so you can go to the usul and really learn and ground yourself in the religion and the religious text. And as a piece of advice, one thing I recall the first time I went to seek knowledge, and this was I, I went to Yemen, I went to Damaj, a, a very blessed pay, place, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve it and bless Ahlul Sunnah to return and fortify that place. Uh, and this was a great place of vision and a place of ilm and fiqh. Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah yarhamuhu, uh, was the Imam there at the time. And that Muhaddith, Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatul Wasiya, who's the Sheikh of the Sheikh that we're studying from now, the, this treatise. That imam, he sat us down, the, the Americans and, and some of the other Westerners, we had a sitting with the sheikh, and I remember him saying to us, and of course I had needed a translator at that time, and he mentioned three things. He said, learn the Arabic language. That was one of the things he said. And he said, learn uh, uh, Quran. You know, memorize Quran as much as you can. And... Uh, the third thing that I recall is he said to not busy yourself with kathra taqil wa qal. Don't busy yourself with getting into disputes and arguments and, and this one said this and this one said this and carrying the tales of this and namima and ghiba and all those other things, uh, getting involved in those big issues and, and so forth and speaking about others and relaying, relaying the kalam and the speech of others. But rather, he said give importance to the Arabic language and give importance to kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And this relates to the next point that the, uh, the sheikh mentioned, the 11th point, he said, journey to seek knowledge. So if you can afford to, if you can, uh, with your responsibilities, if you can go out and seek knowledge, this is the greatest, this is the asl, this is what the imams of the salaf, this is what they used to do, they used to travel for a hadith, and they used to travel to go seek knowledge with the great imams of their time. Uh, this has a significant origin. As the Prophet wasallam, the Prophet of Allah, Moses wasallam, traveled for one issue of knowledge, which was not required. And being a foreigner will help you free up time to gain knowledge. So meaning that when you take uh, knowledge, when you go, as many people that I, I, I know who've traveled to Yemen, who've traveled to Egypt, who've traveled to Mauritania, who've traveled to, uh, uh, to Saudi Arabia and many different countries to seek knowledge. That they went and they made tafarrab. They went where they could just seek knowledge. And this was following the sunnah of the salaf of this ummah. And it's a very rich path and it's a path to Jannah because the Prophet Sallallahu said, Men salaka tariqan. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. Then the Shaykh mentioned, he said, avoiding taqlid or blind following. And he said, Allah said, and follow not that which you have no knowledge about. And there's many things I'd like to say about taqlid, but we're going to keep it brief so that way we can finish this treatise. But it's very important that we don't make along with taqlid ta'asab, that we are blindly following and we are prejudiced with regards to our imam or our sheikh. So, for example, if I say Sheikh Saeed said, Sheikh Rabi said, Sheikh Ubaid said, Sheikh Bukhari said, bas, and I, I, I just, st with my ulama, and that, that as if that's the only speech regarding an issue, and that everything they say is the haq. No, we can't say that about anyone. As Imam Malik said, that everyone statement can be 
rejected illa sahiba hadha qabr. He, he pointed to the grave of the Prophet وسلم, Imam Malik, and he said, everyone's statement can be refuted except the inhabitant of that grave. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayna khata'in tawabun. The Prophet وسلم, said, Every, all the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes is those who repent. So it's very important that, yes, in some issues you may need to make taqlid. Because you don't, you know, we're, we're not mujtahid. We're just beginning students of knowledge, some of us. Some of us aren't even students of knowledge. Some of us are, you know, we're, we have different levels. And even mashayikh sometimes make taqlid in certain masayikh that they may not have time or they may not have the full ability in that particular science to go into that issue. For example, me, myself, I'm going to make taqlid of Imam al-Albani, what he has to say about a hadith, because I don't have knowledge of, of the sciences of hadith. I've studied in the very basic level, very, very basic level. So I don't have any ability to go into the text and make a hukum on a hadith. So therefore, I take a great Imam that is well known for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and reviving the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah, and I, I make taqlid in those issues. But in Aqidah, in certain affairs, it's not permissible to make taqlid that you have to have knowledge of that. You have to have no knowledge of who Allah is. You can't say, well, my Imam says Allah is one, so I say he's one. La, you can't make taqlid in those kind of issues. But instead, you have to know those issues with ilm. And as we mentioned in Usul al-Thalatha, that Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, he said in the beginning of his treaties, he said, No, and may Allah have mercy upon you. Verily, it is an obligation. Uh, that it's an obligation upon us to know four things. And he said, He said, The first thing is knowledge. And then he mentioned what knowledge is. He said, That it is knowledge of Allah and his knowledge of the Prophet and his knowledge of the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. So certain issues you need to know with the textual proofs. You need to know the usul of your deen, especially with, related to aqidah and, and, and things like this, basic things that every Muslim needs to know. That you, you cannot make taqlid and blind follow in. And then the Shaykh said, the 13th, avoid controversial argumentation. And we could spend a whole lesson on this. He said it was collected in a Tirmidhi in his, his Jami'i on Abu Usama al Bahri, radiallahu ta'ala, who said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a people did not become misguided from the guidance they were upon except after they were given to debate religious controversy. And there's so many ayats in the Quran. Uh, so the people of shirk and the people of uh, from the Ahl Kitab, they didn't differ until Bayna was given to them. So until Elm, when Elm came, then they actually differed. When they had knowledge, when things were clarified for them, that's when they actually disputed. So it's very important to avoid disputing and argumentation and debate and uh, those, those type of things which lead to fitna. And then the Shaykh said, And do not become obstinate regarding your opinion during differences in understanding, nor in differences in degree of interpretation, very important, so that people become blind followers of you, whether you are aware of not. I think this is very important for us to sit down and go over one more lesson and finish this uh, treaties. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. So until the next sitting, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.